folks, thanks so much for joining us today. We're so excited to have Craig Schroeder with us today. He was the co-founder and served as the CEO for a website called Pinnacle for Indiana for 18 years. Pinnacle was one of the largest Microsoft partners in Northern Indiana that helped companies develop their technology strategy. His strengths are understanding and aligning technology with business goals through his whiteboarding strategy sessions. His passion is helping individuals operate and find their sweet spots. That's a place where passion and strengths intersect so they can maximize their potential. Today, we're excited because we're going to be discussing his new book, which is The Ultimate Manual, Missing Guide for Living a Meaningful Life. And of course, I read this and it's jam-packed with so much information and so many great things that we want to share with you today. So I'm going to hand it over to Craig so he can explain where he got the inspiration for this book and exactly what he hopes to bring to us. So Craig, if you can tell us. Sure, sure. Well, thanks for having me, number one. Um, the, uh, you know, as you mentioned, I had uh, started that technology company and ran it for about 18 years um, and grew it up pretty big. But during that whole process, you know, I learned a lot about people and leadership, right? And um, we had, it was a technology company, a Microsoft partner, and we had IT people, accounting people, and uh, developers, and all wired differently, you know, mm -hmm. art. Developers are like artists, they're the creatives, they're the right brainers and develop, um, IT people are pretty set in their ways and accountants are accountants, right? So uh, I just, the journey of that learning and growing a company and really understanding how people are wired and understanding their strengths really helped me on this journey to uh, self-awareness and helping people be more self-aware. So long story short, you know, did that company, uh, had fun doing it. Um, but then I, I, just, I ran across this little article on life planning and I, I told my wife, I said, I, I need to do this, you know. So I locked myself in, a, in my room, home office for the weekend and uh, came out and I said, we got to sell the business. And she said, what? You know, and, and uh, the whole premise is you, you kind of set your priorities and how you want to be remembering your goals and you reconcile it with your uh, activities that you're doing right now. And I was totally out of whack. I wasn't aligned. I have three daughters. They're now 26, 25 and 22. But I missed a lot of time with them, but yet I said they were high on my priority list. So the business was really taking a lot of my time. And uh, and I said, well, that's not right. So we, we were fortunate. We were able to sell it within 90 days or so. Didn't put a, take a lot of time. But then I went on the quest for understanding this whole life planning thing. So I, I did some executive coaching. I did, uh, ran a mastermind group. Um, wrote wrote these wrote three books. First one not so good. Second one was you in a sweet spot, and then this one is really honing into helping people be self aware and living on purpose. You know, it's just I think the best gift you can give anybody is the gift of self awareness. I think they're naturally happy um, once you're more aware of yourself and you align your life with where your strengths and your passion are. You'll just be a happier person, and then the ripple effect happens in the world where. You go home happy, you influence your family, you influence your community, and you just, you know, you just, just the positivity around that is just huge for me. And I've been mentoring a lot of kids. You know, I got my life plan certification with my wife. Um, but it's it's really neat to see people be self-aware. They're like, wow, this is, now I could do something with this. You know, my daughters used to have their friends over and they're like, I don't know what I want to do in college. So I'd have them do a quick assessment and they're like, oh, they were, they got affirmation of the direction they were going, which is really, really neat to see. Oh, I would imagine so. So when you said that you want to work with folks to help them like live their lives intentionally, that's your goal, like so that they can find meaning and purpose in their lives? Yep, and know their why, know their purpose, know their why, and, and minimize regrets. You know, the l biggest regret every most people have in life is they did what other people told them to do versus what they wanted to do. So laying out this life plan book you know the first section is just self-awareness you know you're even down to your love language i mean i had that wrong for the first 10 years of my marriage i've been married 26 years now and uh, i thought it was tasks doing things around the house but it was time you know and as soon as i flipped that it was just uh, it's a game changer you know yeah, so you the mentioned that you mentioned that in your book and i i really took note of that too because 
you you always hear stories about women complaining that men don't do enough around the house. Um, so you discovered that it's not task driven, that it's really like word driven, right? Right. And uh, it's yeah, just time. You know, we got the, the five love languages, which is a great book. I bought it for my daughters and friends. You know, it's you know, it, once you once you know that about yourself and, and your spouse or significant other, it's uh, it just really allows you to communicate better. And, and the same thing with the. You know, the DISC profile, the Myers-Briggs, which I use the 16 personalities, which is a great one. Um, it's just how you respond and then talking about uh, the interaction between you and another person and, and mm. their natural wiring. It's just, it's healthy, you know, and you don't have conflicts lower. And I do believe this ripple effect in the world can be pretty big. Yeah, I was I was very taken by a lot of the charts that you used in here to show... Um, you know, like the differences, um, like before, you know, doing something and then after it and all the like pinpoints, you'll explain it better than me. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that because that was mind blowing to be able to see like you'd point, you'd make this chart with these graphs and pinpoint where you are in your life right now. And yep. it's so out of whack. And when you see that, it's so amazing because it's like visual proof too that things are just not flowing the way that they should yeah, maybe you it, could talk to us a little bit about that sure sure that's the life wheel assessment i created that one there's many versions of that i didn't invent it but i think it's been around since the ancient chinese days had had a life wheel you know for balance but you know we have five domains of life your personal your family your, your vo vocation which is your job your community and your faith or your belief system Mm -hmm. And and I added a couple more, you know, the fun, the uh, health, you know, because if you're not keeping those in balance, it's like having a flat tire. It's going to affect part of your sure. other gains of your life. You know, if you looked at, I did mine when I owned Pinnacle, and you know, health, uh, um, health was good, finances were good, but my time with my family was off, and my health may have not as been as good as it could be. So the goal is just to kind of see it and recognize it. I did a workshop with my wife at uh, Holy Cross College or St. Mary's College here in town. And I had them do this assessment and they're like, it's just so eye opening. We say, man, I am out of whack because it's just a quick, where are you at? Or how happy are you? Having fun, you know, having fun at a job. And it's just really, really neat. And again, it's self-awareness is the best gift you can give anybody, I believe. Right, right, right. Now, I'm going to just play devil's advocate for a minute. Um, I mean, I love self-assessment tests, you know, more than the next guy there. Some of them are kind of quirky, but some of them do help you see. But I noticed that when I took some of yours, they were really like, they weren't that long to take, um, which was good. But my question to you is, what do you do with someone that says, hey, I'm working, you know, I'm up at 4 a.m. I don't get home till 8 o'clock at night. When do I have time to sit and, and do this, even though it's great work? Where do I find the time to navigate something like that? A little bit at a time. You know, perfection is the enemy of progress, right? So you just you don't look to have your perfect life plan. You look to just start being aware of phase one and then start throwing some ideas because you're going to learn and you want to take time to digest on um, that 16 personalities one assessment, it's just 1616personalities.com. Mm -hmm. I use that all the time with like uh, the younger kids. And, and uh, I mean, it applies to everybody, but their attention, you know, is not long to do this kind of stuff. And it takes about right. five minutes. And I would recommend it. you even try it if you haven't. It's five minutes and it is spot on about how you're naturally wired, other people that are like you, maybe some career choices and how to interact. It's It's just... It's really neat. And none of these are very, very long at all, but just start. Don't feel like you got to finish the whole book. You know, it's, and plus it's a workbook. You could skip around a little bit if you find something interesting. Maybe you want to work on your mission statement, you know, and start getting your head around that and then go back to your strengths. I do like people doing the assessments first just to get their bearings about it, but you know, it's your life. You just keep taking steps and, and be okay with failure. I mean, fail forward is kind of a big mantra that you got to keep trying, you know? Absolutely. So there's no pressure for somebody to like get your book and then have to feel pressured to like get through it as fast as they can. They can just take their pace, go through it slowly and use it as like a discovery tool, right? Just to keep discovering 
things yep. about themselves. Yes, absolutely. And the neat thing about it too is if you're at a turning point, you know, which some people are, you know, career choice, whatever, it can, people, I've had people just hunker down on a weekend and really crank through it and take two days after that to digest and, and share it with friends and validate and just, because sometimes you go through this, but you need to talk out loud, yeah. you know, especially, especially guys. I tell my wife, I just need freedom to talk because it sounds good in my head, but sometimes when I hear myself talking, oh, absolutely. it sounds dumb, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's just one of those crazy things. So um, yeah, it's, if, if you're at a turning point and you need it, you need a guy to just get you started, do it and then, and then go do something else. And you might have to do it a couple times. You know, I mean, it's life's the journey, right? And we got to enjoy the journey because you, you never arrive. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Um, in the book, you talk about analyzing our core values. Um, why do you think that it's so important? And especially given the state of like, today's politically toxic environment you know with like there's just so much toxicity and animosity going on politically between people so how do you think like someone analyzing what their core values it would be would kind of like help them discover who they are even politically yeah it's it's kind of neat you know i adopted a lot of this when all the businesses i helped consult they had a one-page strategic plan and that got me thinking about, man, I should have a one-page life plan. And it took me a, quite a while to pull this one up. But the business plans had core values for the business. But, you know, I kept digging in that, did a lot of research. And you know, we should have core values as a person too, right? Yes. Core, core values are like the river banks of a river. It's never straight, but it guides you through life. It helps you say yes and no easier. Because, you know, your purpose can change. But your core values help you make those decisions. And uh, I, I just, it's a cool exercise. That's why I, there's a couple more pages to that because you really got to warm yourself up to the idea of having personal core values. You know, we have them in, you know, in an unconscious state, but when you make them conscious, it's exactly. kind of, it, you know, it just makes you, or it helps you say yes and no to things that you should be saying too consciously. That's so true. And, you know, with folks like Jordan Peterson helping men discover more of their core values, too, I think there's a lot of emphasis on that, um, especially the past year. And, and lots of times, I, I think you're right, you don't really know what your core values are until you do like a self-analysis of them. It's not something you sit down and, and know, like we know our hair is a certain color, our eyes are a certain color. But we don't really know our core values until they're defined for us. Am I right? So Correct. like that exercise, it's like looking in a mirror in a way so you can really get a good handle on on what they are. Am I right about that? Right on the money. It's it's what you stand for. And these little values, I don't say little values, they're just they're values that just help you stay on track. You know, we go off track all the time in life. It's 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 recognizing as fast as you can that you're off track and get back on track. Yes. You know, it's just, it's just, we always, you know, goals, work, business, whatever, you're just going to start a little bit off track and then boom, you know, that's why the quarterly goals are so important and the re retrospectives and having an accountability partner say, how'd you do, you know, are you, so were these really true quarterly goals for you or were these aligned with where you're going? You know, and one of the, Neatest things, it took me a, gosh, it took me a long time to figure out this one-page life plan, but I was missing something in it, and it's the missing column that I finally found, um, which is your, um, oh, when you, when you pass away, what's the word I'm looking for? Your eulogy. Oh, your eulogy. Okay. Your eulogy. Sorry about that. Your eulogy okay. across all the domains of your life, and I'm like, how do you want to be remembered? Because mm. what you do every quarter should line up what you want to do in a year, should line up what you want to do three to five years from now, and it should be aligned somewhat with how you want to be remembered. So kind of, that's, that's so why the one page plan is just keep it in your face, you know, and, and having your strengths at the bottom of it, I uh, I like it. I'm, I'm fond of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. I mean, you have to be passionate about it too, right? It's your baby. Right. So now you mentioned about trigger words and 
why it's so important for us to know like what our trigger words are now for folks that haven't read your book could you kind of go over that for us and just give us a basic explanation of what they are and what like pulls you back and causes you to stop and think about your actions sure i mean we're all classically conditioned right i mean it's we fall into the norms and i mean i'm guilty as anybody else but you know when you make a mistake I always do a retrospective and say, okay, I don't want to make this mistake again. Mm -hmm. So you consciously go through it and say, if I'm in this situation again, how do I want to respond? So then you get into, and you're, you think through that consciously, and then it's in your brain. So if it comes up again, then you get to respond instead of react. And that's kind of a thing. And trigger words can help you with that. Mine, Could you give us an my, example? Well, mine, mine's respect, okay? So when I find myself in a meeting here, I'm helping run a business here, a fragrance business, and it's pretty pretty cool. But if I'm being disrespectful or I'm being disrespective, I my trigger word is the pause. That I pause. I'm like, something isn't right. Either I'm not in a good context, I don't have enough information, or something's wrong with them. So I just it triggers me if if there's just disrespect going on. I'm like, boom, pause. Why is this happening? Because we don't need to be disrespectful. I mean, everybody's going to have good days, bad days, or whatever. But blatant disrespect is my trigger word, and I just, it just makes me stop and think about the situation to make sure I'm contributing to the best I can. So, in other words, when you're in a situation that's either making you feel disrespected or uncomfortable in some way, you use the word respect. Like that word just pops in your head. Like you've triggered your your conscience to to say okay something's not right here so the the word respect enters and then that causes you to pause and self-reflect about the situation that you're in am i right yeah, right on you know and you actually create new neural pathways in your brain because it instead of just reacting which is a, a highway that's created and you just, you know if somebody hits you you yes. get it right back right you know it's just a re, it's just a reaction um you know, when I was CEO, Pickle, you know, all that stuff, I had a little narcissism ego going on because I, I, I had to survive. You know, sure. I created the company. And I, I think a lot of people that are entrepreneurs have a little bit of that. But I realized it and, I had, you know, went to coaching and all that stuff. And I read a great book on rewiring that. So I'm almost now I'm ego hypersensitive, right? In, in hiring people and being aware. But you create these new neural pathways so you can respond it just gets easier to respond and you're not in this reaction mode then you're like and it's just going through that cycle with your trigger words and then when you do make a mistake determine how you want to react next time or respond next time and you think about it and it actually will help create it just it's really really cool and it gets oh easier. i love that um like i can remember so many times being in a situation that was like and and my trigger word would be uncomfortable because like i would immediately feel uncomfortable and then react instead of pausing and if i had paused for five seconds i would have had such a better outcome in those situations so i love that it's brilliant love yeah. that thank you thank you and you can have multiple trigger words you know i mean it, it's just go through the process of uh how do I want to respond next time? Train your brain reaction versus response. You yes. get to respond. Reaction is just reactions, right? Oh, I love it. Now, you also talk about um, the importance for us to write down our goals. Um, they, you know, that, that helps us achieve them. Now, we've been inundated with books like... Um, you know the 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 cause of like positive thinking and you know all those types of trends that come out the secret was another big thing and yeah you know bringing wealth by imagining and so when it comes to writing down your goals um again a lot of people don't have the time to do that or they'll just make a list real quick and then throw throw it on their desk and forget about it can you talk to us why it's so important why you think it's so important for us to physically write down our goals and what they can do to help us manifest so whenever you get multiple senses involved writing thinking seeing that that firms things up a little bit so that's just a basic but i like it but defining success you know goals should be leading up to success and people don't define success well 
mm -hmm. right? More money, bigger car, bigger house, you know. Right. Success, you know, and I, Tony Robbins says it all the time, success without fulfillment is failure. Mm. Fulfillment is different than success. So when you, you start writing down your goals, and that's why I specifically laid out that one page life plan the way I did, because your goals for the year, your goals for the quarter should be leading up to your year, but it should be how you want to be remembered. It should be in, in sync with your why. It should be in sync with your mission, you know? And so then it really just solidifies and you look at them and, and you look at the back of the page and you say, yep, that's who I want to be remembered as. And this is what I'm doing to work towards that. So it, it kind of just syncs things up because otherwise random goals, you know, be, I want to lose five pounds. Good. Still good. It's part of being healthy on your life wheel, but, if you're healthier, then you can maybe accomplish your goals to live your mission and your why, you know, and your purpose. So it, they all work together because it is your life. You're either going to go passive through life or you're going to be active and you're going to be engaged. So um, after so a person writes down their goals, because I've done that myself, you know, I've written down my goals and then you kind of just forget about it. Like, what do you have any advice for folks? Like after you write your goals down, what's the next step? What should they be doing? They should share them with a friend or an accountability partner to say, okay, this is what I'm committing to. Because when you share, you usually commit further. Yes. And then and then have a quarterly checkup with somebody you trust that could be candid with you and push and call BS. It's like, oh, I like that. You know, I mean, accountability is, is key. I mean, we all have self-disciplines, some good, some bad. Uh, but having an accountability partner that can really say, how are you doing on your quarterly goals? Did you do good? And do that retrospective. Because you might have to adjust quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, based on what you actually get done in quarter one. Again, it's not a perfect plan because life isn't straight. Sure. So you adjust, you take a stab, but I guarantee you're going to be further down the road looking at this. And that's why one page, you know, if you, I've, I've did many business plans that were 20 pages and guess what they sit on a shelf right yeah i mean there's you can always have the backup detail there but looking at that one page and say yeah this is my life and i'm good with this and it'll motivate i look at it every day you know taped to back of my computer you know you should be looking at this because it's it, it is your life you know i mean so live it so a person doesn't need to be like um it's funny i read this book by this author recently and she she brought up two topics that I absolutely loved she said there are pantsers and there are plotters and the pantsers are the people that like to live life like flying off the seat of their pants so they don't they're not into outlines right. they're not into like and there are many authors that that are that are pantsers that write fabulous books like Stephen King for example yeah. you know he never had an outline he just wrote a book and it just like it was like a stream of consciousness. So for the folks that are like pantsers and not plotters, how would this book work for them? If they're not the type of person that likes to like sit down and outline things and fill out forms, how important is, is it for them to like use your book as a tool? Well, there's still the creatives like that and the people that like uh, spontaneity. Right, that's, that's exactly right. It's, it's just their nature of how they live they're still wanting to accomplish something. Everybody wants to have a mission or a purpose or know Very their why, you right. know, so how you do it, I don't think really matters. You know, I mean, they might, they might flip the book back and forth and start in the rear, you know, I mean, it's just getting through it and saying, oh, now I'm more self-aware of me and maybe I like the core values I came up with, maybe I didn't. So the people that hop around, it still works. It They'll still hop around works. in this one. That's you know? important. Yeah. That's yeah. important for, for our readers to know because there are a lot of folks that can't, like I said before, they just don't have the bandwidth to sit and get from front to back. So they can just go in and pick the sections they like and work on the core areas that are important for them. Absolutely. Okay. Now, you also talk about EQ, which is emotional um, quotient. And it's been really big in corporate America. I noticed that they're using those types of exams over like your typical IQ. Could you talk to our listeners a little bit about that? Explain what it is and why it's so important to like add that to the self-discovery process. 
Yeah, it's I. You know, I'm running a business unit here for a company uh, that develops fragrances for the world. You know, and all kinds of products. And it's pretty cool. And I, I introduced this as part of the recruiting tactics when I was recruiting people here. There's the EQ or the EI. You know, in emotional intelligence, emotional right. quotient. Uh, they are interchangeably used, but it, it gives me insight into their empathy, their social skills, because if the role requires the empathy, if it requires the social skills. If, if you know it just gives you another perspective of where they're going to fit in the environment and is it a good fit and, and 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 in turn you should know that about yourself too when you're looking for a role volunteer job community you know what wherever you're at knowing how you're wired you know if you're a high d high i on a disc profile you can go up and give a speech right and you will be okay with it leading a right. group volunteers but if you're a S and a C compliant, you're going to be wanting to do the accounting work. You're going to be wanting to do the research. You know, and it's just knowing those things. And, and the EQ is the same thing. Where do you fit in in a group? And how can you best contribute? And I think we all should contribute in our best strengths area. You know, and that's, we'll just, you'll just be better. Do you find that people answer them honestly? Yes. They do. Uh huh. Because they're, they're, the test, the assessments are pretty smart now. They know if somebody's trying to fake it. I've only seen one people, uh, uh, one person uh, fake it, and I knew, and I called them on it. And I said that's not right at all. You know, but so the questions are designed to like gauge if a person's being honest about things. Right, and it helps them through it. Yeah, it's hard to fake them now. Plus, yeah. Plus, I mean, people that are generally doing this just go with your first gut it's really about again being the best you so you can't fake that you know and, you know so, so just answer right answer truthfully and it's a lot more fun and then lastly um the wheel of life concept that you talk about in your book um i know we touched on some of that a little bit but can you i found that so fascinating can you just briefly explain why that particular thing allows you to see which areas of your life you need to work on and like maybe you can just expand a little bit more on that sure so the wheel of life what let me see what page that's on that's you know it talks about you know you have career faith fun growth romance family health and finances and it just from zero to ten you rank yourself how how good you're doing in each of those categories and then you connect them together like a wheel and because if one is flat, that it, you know, if one's spiking, they all can't be all spiking, right? You know, I mean, so the key is to get that as balanced as possible so you roll through life. And you could keep expanding them at, as you're self aware. But if romance takes a big hit, you know, then is your, are you having fun? Are you growing? Are you, is your health correlated to that? You know, so it shows you correlations through life. I like doing these um, life wheels every quarter or every six months to see if there's a trigger point that's happening in my life because some you know life can just sneak up on oh you. yes and then all of a sudden you're like gosh i'm not having fun anymore my finances are in the pot i've been spending too much you know so it's good to self-assess and it just it's a quick little hey this is where i'm at right now and that's why i use those examples before i sold the business after i sold the business and then after, after I start getting it, it really is neat because I'm like, it helped me set my goals. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely share some of those graphics with our listeners, too, in the article, because it's amazing to see like the before and afters of. So so after you fill it out, if you see you're all over the place, what can a person do to bring that balance back so that their wheel of life is you know more balanced? What do you so, recommend that they do? So that that's where the goals come in, right? So we know ourselves now. We know where we're at. This is kind of a snapshot. What do you want to do about it? If health is down low, what do you want to do? Do you want to start walking? Do you want to start working out? How many days a week? Because your goal is to get that flat spot back round. So your wheel is round. As round as possibly can be, right? So that this really helps people with prioritizing their goals and which which one is most important and do you find that folks that have gone through most of the exercises in your books have you know balanced their wheel 
can you talk to some of maybe the studies you've done or some of the feedback you've gotten from folks after you know using your manual sure sure yeah the biggest one is the the job you know people just uh their career yeah you know, that's flatlined there's like why am i still doing this you know i'm saying it's bad you know i had one guy go through the book he, after he realized his career was just like bad he's like i don't even see my growth here at this company so then he dug deep into his strengths and then he left the company and started a whole new career and he's happier than peach you know i mean it's just it's just that kind of stuff that shows you where you're at maybe faith is lower your belief system you want to do you maybe you want to watch a podcast go to church whatever um all, but it applies to all all parts of your life and it just keeps you it's kind of like a health checkup going to the doctor you know yeah so you've been getting a lot of positive feedback from folks Oh, um, yeah. after they they do a lot of these exercises they've been coming back to you and you know having life-changing affirmations i mean have they what's the feedback been like for you it helps them get clarity in in their goals and it gives them confirmation that they're working towards something their purpose and their why before it's like i'm working towards more money you know or just retirement or whatever they just didn't have why defined they didn't have success defined and and when they set goals, it was hard to keep the goals because they didn't know where they were going, you know? Mm -hmm. So when they're building, you're building momentum, you know, momentum is focused intensity over time. Mm -hmm. So you focus and you, you do it over time consistently, you'll get momentum and that wheel will just start rolling and rolling and you'll pick up speed and then you'll start accomplishing more things for you. Right. Right. You know? Any other key points? Um, you'd like to bring to our attention about your book can they take this electronically or do they need to have the hardcover um they well it's on a kindle version now so uh i like the hard the paper because people could scribble and circle and all that stuff and i designed it to be a workbook i didn't want it to be a book somebody read and did nothing with you know it's just i want people to work and i want them to be fulfilled so um, the downloads, some of these images, the life wheel, the one page life plan are on my blog site or on the website, the, the ultimate okay. So they can go download those and mess around with those. If they don't, if they just want to get a preview or mess around with it. Uh, I, I recommend the life wheel for sure. Okay. I'll definitely make sure I add all those links to the article so folks can go check it out and see, you know, if something like this is definitely going to help them. I loved it. Um, I, you know, find myself like at night when I don't feel like watching TV, I'll sit with it and take a few of those assessments and they're always fun too. They're fun because sometimes you discover things about yourself that you're like, whoa, you know, yeah. I didn't realize that. And I, I would imagine it's fun to do with your partner too. Like I would like to get my husband involved in it and like maybe do some of the exercises together too. Yeah, that would be that's my next thought would be to have a couple's plan i mean because think about it in life you're either growing together or you're growing apart very rarely are you going straight down the road right so, right so it's really nice to know what his plans are just make sure they're aligned with your Absolutely. plans. i think and, a couple's and, thing would be brilliant yeah. to, to yeah. do some follow up to this that yeah would be a great idea great thank you so do you have any anything else you want our readers to know and our listeners to know about your book or your life's work that um, you think is important for us? I just think it's really important to take the time to be self-aware. I, I believe in the ripple effect. I believe you, when you know yourself, you go to work, you know, work's a big part of our life, mm -hmm. whether home or wherever. And if you can be fulfilled there and you're in your sweet spot, that, that ripple effect of going home, going community, influencing friends, and you keep helping other people be more self-aware and they see it through you is the world could just be a better place and that's my oh point. i agree i agree and in this toxic environment there's so much negativity going on that you know these types of things are so important and that's why i wanted to make sure my my listeners and my readers were aware because um there's so much value in a lot of these assessments and discovering who you are and what you can do to help others too it's so important. So thank you so much for bringing this information to us. And can they reach out and ask you any questions if they have any questions? Do you have a place on your website or an email where folks can reach out? 
Sure, my blog site is the best. Just hit me comments, whatever. It's uh, just my first and last name, Craig Schroda dot com. And I know that you'll probably have that in the links, right? Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, your have, social media too, your Facebook. Yep, LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, Twitter, Facebook. Wonderful. There. I'll be all sure right. to share all that. Thank you so much. It was great having you here today. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you.